I used to go to Spokane when I was little, but as things got more severe, I had to go to, I have to go to Seattle now. I had um, thoracic outlet syndrome, so I had to um, get two of my ribs removed, and that was my first procedure in Seattle. In Spokane, um, I had my spine fused all the way down to my pelvis, um, so I can't really bend my back or anything like that. Um, I've had rods put in my legs and plates in my hips. Um, I have I had those removed and replaced a couple times too. So that's it. Yeah. Yeah, it's just my life, so I have to just I just try not to think about it. She was born with um a lot of broken bones so that's it's kind of started there and so she's had over 500 broken bones mostly her femurs and her hips um, and so she's had before her she didn't have scoliosis until I think she was 2015 two, yeah so yeah I mean, we didn't have that surgery until 2017 but before that she's probably had about 20 surgeries just on her femurs and her hips for her broken bones um, so <laughs> it's always just become a thing in our life. Um, you just kind of learn how to accept it and, and find the positive and understand why you go through what you go through. The lung disease is separate. We can't really treat that. That's just kind of something that we'll watch and monitor. Um, she has about 57% left of her lungs. Um, so. I think the most important thing is just focusing on the quality of life is where we started, was where we got to um, yesterday. It's just hard, I guess. Um, I think it'd be fun if I wasn't going for doctor's appointments, but um, it's a really long drive. Eight hours is a lot to sit in the car, and it it's really it makes me really sore. Um, and it's kind of hard being in the hospital all day. They have good food, though. <laughs> he seemed a little weird. <laughs> um, the airport ladies warned us. She's like, oh, yeah, he's nice, but he's a little odd. <laughs> um, <laughs> But he was, I got to know him and he was really, really sweet. <laughs> I think the benefits of flying are definitely just, Maya's in so much pain constantly and she's so uncomfortable um, getting it over with and her, watching her just be able to, I, most, I think she's probably stayed awake once, but being able to just see her relax and fall asleep and um, it's, it's a lot, it means a lot to me to just see her relax for a second and not have to be uncomfortable and be able to make it home faster. It, it's, it's huge. Um, yeah, she goes through so much already, so. I don't think about me, I think about her. And so that's kind of what keeps me going. And she never complains about anything, so it, it makes me have a different look on life. Um, to watch what she's gone through her whole life and to never hear her complain and protect me so much is, is it, it, it's, it's, I don't, it's, it's hard to understand how somebody could be so positive and still just want to live life in a positive way, but I mean, she, she teaches me how to be strong and um, taught me what life was all about. I think it's hard for my mom because she has to do it all by herself. But she has, um, you know, we have people around to help us. This is Michael Burks, and he wears flip-flops when he drives his airplane. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> this is Maya Toon. And she barely makes it off the runway before she falls asleep. So I met them at Signature at uh, Spokane International and um, immediately fell in love. She's all smiles. 
So then whenever their name comes up, I grab it as soon as possible. Um, it goes onto a distribution advertising board for all the pilots. And it's not like there's a lot of competition in Montana, but sometimes the uh, Spokane pilots will grab it. Or there's a gentleman by the name of Tony that has a jet. And for him, it's more cost effective to take both legs because it costs too much money to come down so quickly. So if he grabs it, then he'll fly one way and he'll do both missions. So as soon as I see it, um, I grab it. And also too, Angel Flight West knows that there's three specific people that they now let me know are ready for flights before they advertise them. So they let me have basically first right refusal because I've told them that I don't want anybody else flying my patients. <laughs> because it needs to help people that can't afford to fly themselves or drive themselves the places that they need to go. Montana families dealing with critical and complicated medical conditions usually have to travel hundreds of miles for specialized care. It's why the Angel Flight program is so important to rural areas where volunteer pilots across the state fly patients and their families to those out-of-state hospitals and clinics. But there's a problem right now. There aren't enough pilots to meet the demand. So tonight, we were so honored to have Angel Flight West here. It's a group that provides um, free transportation. They're a nonprofit. They have a group of volunteer pilots that donate their plane, they donate their time, they pay all the costs associated with the flight, and then they provide it for people who need medical assistance. They need to get somewhere. Mark Holberg. Mark has hit the mark of 100 missions. Chris Bennett, a Special Achievement Award for hitting the mark of 340 missions. Kiyomi Burks in Montana. I had 11 Earth Angel missions this year, so I'm not sure if it's an award or just kind of a recognition, but I got a really cool jacket out of it, so meaning that I drove uh, 11 Earth Angel missions. Earth Angels are the ones that drive on the ground. We don't go in the air. I've had six-month-olds to 80-year-old uh, that I've flown, and having to deal with what they have to deal with on a daily basis is enough. So the travel is just got to be horrific for them, especially, you know, when you're going over. I know Maya and Carly this week, they got stopped in Snoqualmie because of a, a avalanche warning. So they were up there, you know, for an hour to two hours until they got to leave. So, you know, not only did they have the trip, they had the delay. They had to worry about ice, snow, you know, texting and driving and animals and everything else where, you know, all we do is just, you know, point A to point B and there's none of that in the way. So for the most part, it's just simply to help uh, patients cope with their appointments, get there quicker and make it a lot easier for them. <laughs> You have no idea how amazing it feels to bless somebody, a kid, a parent, or whoever's involved in this program by doing what you love and just doing one mission a month, spending two to three hours a month flying a patient of any age is the most rewarding thing you'll ever do. And you do 12 a year. If every pilot in this country did 12 a year, there would not be one person ever left behind. No one would ever have to drive. And so if you could give up two to three hours of your time once a month, two to three hundred dollars once a month, and share your love and bless somebody else, it'll be worth it. The pilots don't really understand what it is. They think that you need to have a special rating, you have to have a special license, and that's not the case. As long as you have a general private pilot license, you can actually fly for angel flight. So I think education and um, communication is the biggest obstacle right now. I just don't think that people understand the depth of what families go through um, and what kids go through and the tolls it takes on, on families. And I, th I think that if people could step back and, and see uh, what one thing, one flight could do and how much it benefits and helps, it helps. I think, I think a lot more people would do it. I'm afraid of some things, but not big. 
not not heights. I'm afraid of not being able to be independent when I'm older. Because I want to be able to be like everybody else and go to college and get a job and stuff. If you would like to learn more about Angel Flight West as a volunteer pilot, Earth Angel, request a flight, or donate, go to www.angelflightwest.org. Or you can call 888-4AN-ANGEL. That's 888-426-2643.